Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Ozer. I'm here from the Hearing Loss Association of America, North Bay Chapter, in Sonoma and Marin counties. And I'm here to talk about an important topic. And with me today is my friend and colleague, um, Ann Thomas, and she's from the Diablo Valley Chapter. I'd like for Ann to introduce herself. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you everyone for asking us to come give a presentation today about a topic that is dear to both of our hearts and we hope that you benefit from the information that we provide today. Um, so Anne will be um, sharing the slides and I'll be doing uh, most of the talking. And I want to encourage you to um, ask questions. This is an interactive presentation. Encourage you to read the captions, to think about questions you have. You can ask them at any time. We have a special question and answer period um, later that um, you can hold your questions for too if you want. So, uh, hold on one second. Let's see if there's a problem here. Okay, so that was my phone from um, Calistoga, coming in from Calistoga. Um, so I want you to know that I am not a hearing health professional. I'm not an audiologist or a hearing aid dispenser. I'm a person with hearing loss and I've had this hearing loss for a long time. It started gradually when I, when I was in my forties and now at 72 years old, I have a cochlear implant in one ear and a hearing aid in the other. And through technology, I'm able to have a pretty good life here. I have a microphone attached to my computer so that I can hear you even better. So um, next slide, please. This so is Sarah, where Sarah, would you like to tell everybody what we're going to talk about today? Yes. Today, we're going to talk about hearing health and independent living. Hearing health is an invisible disability, and we'll be talking about how we can live better with it. So there are a lot of people with hearing loss, and we looked at the numbers. 20% of the population. That means that in Napa County, that would mean more than 27,000 people with hearing loss. And in Calistoga, with fewer people, that would mean more than 1,000 people with hearing loss. So these people are all around us. Next slide. Actually, there's a relationship between hearing loss and age. It, the loss increases with age, so that age 65, one in three people have it, and age 75, one out of two. So if you live long enough, and I hope you do, the chances are great that you will join the ranks of people with hearing loss. And hearing loss is a life-changing condition. It affects everything, our relationships, our self-esteem, our social interactions, our daily activities, and how other people perceive us. Because it's an invisible condition, sometimes hearing loss is misinterpreted. People think, that maybe we're aloof or we're confused or there's some sort of personality change or dementia. Next. So 
So unfortunately, 80% of the people who could benefit from this current technology are not using it. And hopefully this will change for people with mild to moderate hearing loss through the over-the-counter hearing aids. You may be thinking, I'm doing just fine. Everybody is just mumbling. Many people don't acknowledge that hearing loss doesn't affect them, but also their relationships with others. Ask someone close to you if they think you might have hearing loss because it could negatively affect your relationship. That answer they give you could help you do something about it. So even if you're not in the numbers we talked about, more than likely you or someone you know will be touched by the hearing loss disorder because it affects so many people. It affects our spouses, our relatives, friends, colleagues, children, grandchildren. The most common age-related hearing loss is one of high frequencies. There's so many grandparents who would love to understand and communicate better with their grandchildren, but those grandchildren have high-pitched voices. That might be a signal to those grandparents to address the hearing loss. Next. Imagine living in my world where living where it's exhausting listening intently to understand. People start avoiding difficult situations like family gatherings and groups of people. As you can imagine, this can result in socialized isolation, loneliness, and depression. Next. If you would like to maintain your independence as long as possible with hearing loss, it's important to acknowledge you don't hear like you used to. I certainly don't. You can learn coping strategies. You can determine where you need help and you can develop a plan. A plan maybe for assistive listening devices and a support system for emergencies like an earthquake. Let your people, let your neighbors and the police, SMART 911 and CERT, C-E-R-T, know that if there's a catastrophe and if they were looking for you and if they called out your name, you might not hear them. Normal hearing is so dynamic Someone can talk to you from another room and you can hear it. I can't do that. That capability ends with hearing loss. To compensate for that though, you need to learn to advocate for yourself and develop coping strategies. And some of those strategies are asking people to speak a little slower, asking people to maybe speak a little louder. And the single most important coping strategy you can learn is to ask people to face you when you're talking to them. Lip reading or speech reading may help some. It adds a little bit to the understanding but it's amazing the difference that that little 20% can make by seeing someone's face, their eyes, their expression, their mouths. Our chapter is, even has please face me buttons. And Anne and I are wearing those buttons, these yellow buttons today. We joke that everyone really needs to wear them on their backs 
So people who aren't facing them get the message. Next. In addition to learning coping strategies, there are a variety of assistive listening devices to help you in daily living. So next, who can use these devices? These devices are for both people with hearing loss and without hearing loss. Many people don't know that even if they have hearing instruments, like I have a hearing aid and a cochlear implant, they may still need additional assistance. Hearing aids are not like our glasses. You don't get 20-20 hearing. You may need assistance with situations that are past the six foot range of your hearing aids. Hearing aids may not be feasible for some people. A person may have dexterity problems, their fingers, financial limitations, or severe illness. When might you need to use an assistive listening device? Some of the situations you or a friend of yours might need help with are daily living, like communication. If when you want to communicate with loved ones, with family and friends. How about when you need to understand your doctor? Pharmacists need to be understood, especially when they're advising you about a new medication. The bank, the grocery store, a live theater, movies, an adult education or health class. For the telephone, there is California Telephone Access Program with hearing. The, the California Telephone Access Program is not just um, for the telephone, it's also for seeing and moving, speaking and difficulty learning or remembering something. For the television, you might want to get infrared TV ears or a hearing loop or proprietary hearing aid accessories. Captions, all new TVs, 13 inch and larger are required to be able to broadcast captions. And alerting, doorbell and alarm clocks. So all these devices are available. Next slide, please. Safety is a big issue for people with hearing loss. We need, fire, we need to know about fire and carbon monoxide or emergency earthquakes and weather as we're experiencing now in so many parts. It's hard for most people who've had normal hearing to imagine they might not be able to hear their smoke or carbon monoxide detector in enough time to save them from a fire or carbon monoxide poisoning. It's such a loud, shrill sound. Statistics have shown though, the people with the most common type of hearing loss, the high frequency, will not be alerted in the crucial three minutes with a normal alerting device. You need to get a special alerting device for a person who has hearing loss. They alert via a low frequency sound, a vibration, a strobe. Next, please. When talking about safety and alerting devices, we mentioned um, 
the smoke detector and the carbon monoxide detector, there's a weather radio available that can alert you to um, the weather in a way you could hear it. And public emergency alerts, we all need to be able to access those. So there are devices that can make it possible to hear those alerts. Next. I'm sure you've heard of um, CTAP, California Telephone Access Program. They have a new name. Now they're called CA Cal Connect. And um, they have a lot of resources, not just for people with hearing loss, but people with low vision or speech uh, for soft speech. They have a device to make your speech louder for memory and for mobility. So it's good for all of us to know what this organization offers. These devices are free. And in addition to what I mentioned, there's also the Sonic Alert Home Aware Signaling System. And you can see that on the screen here. This is free, the device is free, but there are some accessories that are not free that you can purchase. And those, those items you can purchase are the smoke and carbon monoxide detector, a doorbell, a baby crying, and for weather. Those devices may be purchased at a company called Diglo. And I'm going to show you that. They're an online company. Next. You may be interested in trying out some assistive technology. This organization, Ability Tools, is a program of the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers. They have a try before you buy lending library of 148 devices. So our closest locations are Hayward and San Francisco. Those are in-person locations. And you could contact them about having them they will send you devices to try before you buy. And this is a wonderful resource. Next. Everyone needs to know what their medical insurance situation is. And we do have the health insurance counseling and advocacy program for your area. For Napa County, HICAP is what it's called. This organization is located in Petaluma and insurance can be so difficult to understand. HICAP provides free and objective information and counseling and Medicare and Medi-Cal. If you qualify for Medicare, Medi-Cal, it may also, it may include hearing aids as a benefit. So this is wonderful to know, a great resource for you to contact for that insurance. The organization next, the organization I mentioned for all sorts of assistive listening devices, um, including the weather radio is called Diglo. And you can see on the slide, the website, and this is the largest provider of hearing assistive technology in the United States. So it's wonderful to go on your computer and just to look at everything they have to offer. Next. We all know that in order to maintain our health, well-being and independence, we need to eat healthy, 
avoid excessive fats, exercise, and maintain social contacts. I would like you to add one more thing to the list. Get your hearing checked. If you would like to explore a hear, uh, you'd like to explore if a hearing aid might help you. In California, you can do so without spending money for something that doesn't work for you. We have hearing aid consumer protection. You're allowed to try out your hearing aids um, for 45 days. The Beverly Song Consumer Protection Act provides a 45 day warranty on all new and used hearing aids. A longer trial may be provided. If at the end of the trial period, the aid does not fit satisfactorily, it can be returned for a full refund. This is very important for us to know in California what a wonderful benefit we have here. Hearing aids are expensive. You may feel uncertain about knowing the questions to ask. The Hearing Loss Association of America has created a checklist to help you. It's called Purchasing a Hearing Aid, a Consumer Checklist. You have nothing to lose trying hearing aids and more than likely all of your relationships will improve. I want to also point out that Costco will check your hearing for free. Next. So at this point, I would like to open the meeting up for questions. We've presented a lot of information and I'd like to give you the opportunity to ask about anything we've presented today or questions you may have. Um, maybe Elena, you could uh, field ask. the questions or Amanda, whoever is there, you could field the questions. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. Mm -hmm. um, she talked about California Connected uh, and the sort of radio weather uh, public emergency. I know that's whenever we have issues with everything going down here at Calistoga, you know, you get your emergency uh, blackouts and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, radios don't work. We have very limited um, reception mm -hmm. unless you have a really high power. Expensive. Is this something that they we can actually purchase or we can connect with them to see if they can just give them out for free? I mean, I have a transistor radio and it works pretty good, but it only gets two channels. So which one was, was, was it called the, California? The, the, can you hear that, Sarah? Yes, we can hear you. And could you thank you for that question? That's so important. Thank you for asking that. Um, I believe Anne can answer that for us. Yeah. Um, what I was understanding was that the 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 questioner was asking about a weather radio. Is that correct? Well, it, uh, or also public emergency. Um, it was just even more important, I think, because we're in the fire area here and. Now with all the rains and everything, and the flooding could be included. But uh, just to have us, is there something that, that you mentioned a radio uh, being available to seniors where they can keep it in their house and, and keep updated on these things rather than Mixel. We have all that stuff on our phones, but sometimes the phones go out because the internet goes out. So is it, I just, is it California connected and that's who we talk to, we call them and see what they have to offer seniors? So we're lucky that there is a federal program and also a California PUC program, Public Utilities Commission, but I'm hearing something behind your question and we're all in this situation. So frequently our electricity goes out. So if your electricity goes out, what do you do? So I happen to live south of Walnut Creek 
And a couple of years ago, we didn't have electricity for like eight days. So we're com my husband and I were completely dependent on our cell phones. Well, of course, your cell phone only lasts for one day. So they sell special battery backups that can last for several days or several charges. And so we all need to have the ability to be able to recharge at least our smartphone because without your smartphone, you're completely cut off. Um, you can go online and find them. When you look for them, make sure that you get one that's big enough. So um, they're sold by Amperage and you want to make sure that you get one that's big enough to do your phone potentially your laptop. Laptops need more energy than your phone to recharge. Is, is that really what you were asking about? How can we stay connected when the electricity goes off? Well, the, yeah, that's part of it. Um, I know that during the last two fires we had here, um, our internet went off. And so I have Xfinity, everybody has something different. So the phone reception was almost nil. And um, we had no idea what was really going on. Um, you know, three o'clock in the morning, you, you could see the fire, but you don't know if you're supposed to be ready to evacuate. And this is what I thought the radios would be something that they used to be. They would let you know what's going on. Um, yeah, and the TVs are down, so the news is off. And it's just, it was kind of always a backup for me. And now it doesn't seem to exist. And then when you spoke about getting radios for weather and that sort of thing, I was thinking maybe that would include any kind of emergency situation, you know, because we, can't, we get cut off. And like you said, the phones, I mean, I didn't get hardly any information from my phone and I was hooked up to Nixle and everything. And I was able to recharge my phone in my car because of no electricity, but it, there was just no information. And um, so I, you have to sign up for the programs that alert you. Yeah, I have that. Nixle, all that. But a lot of okay, times- Well, so I, if I were in your shoes, I would complain. I would advocate. Uh, so I'm signed up for all of those programs. And I give another, um, a whole other presentation on emergency preparedness, and I give it every September. And so I receive notifications on my phone when anything's happening in my, excuse me, my cell phone, not your yes. landline phone, your cell phone. Yeah. So yeah. all of us need cell phones to be able to make sure that we can stay connected in that situation. I can show you a picture of what um, one of the special uh, radios looks like. And what it does is it has a um, captioning window and it streams information. Sarah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up and show that. And if you'd all like me to give you the presentation about emergency preparedness and everything, contact us later. Yes, that's great. Anne's gonna pull up um the what you're asking about the weather radio and that's what she's going to pull up a picture of and look at how that might be helpful here yes is, is that also not just weather but public emergency radio uh, weather okay. weather and public emergency yes Yes. Is, you know, is it electric only or is it battery operated? Um, I don't know. And yeah. So um, you've asked a question that nobody else has ever asked me before. So the this Midland radio, see at the top where it says tornado? Yeah. So see it, it runs a streaming um, information and it's connected to emergency messages for, it's called the NOAA channels, seven NOAA channels. But what I'm hearing you ask is, do the um, infra emergency messages from the PUC and PG&E and all of the locations and the, and the governmental um, agencies, will they show up on this um, radio as well? And right. I am not sure about that. Let me see and see. 
And I can always look for it. I just, who do I contact? Do I contact California Connected? <clears throat> Um, okay, and, emergency broadcasts might be included, including amber alerts, hazardous explosions, fires, chemical spills, and other civil emergencies. Okay. And, so right here. And Anne, is this battery operated? Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. It says it, it uses three AA batteries. Oh, that's good. Okay, thank you so much. Now, but I just looked this up under, I Google it and find it at Amazon or do I go to California Connected to get it? Ah, uh, good question. No. Okay. So California Connect is basically about the telephone, how to use, how to stay connected via the telephone. And the devices that they provide are, I'm familiar with hearing and low vision because some of those devices are the same um, or even maybe a little dementia um, because the specific telephone that is for low vision and dementia has huge buttons or they even have the capability of having a picture there. So you wouldn't have to, if you dialed somebody's number, you could just touch their picture. And these phones are amplified. They're amplified for people with hearing loss. And they only provide accessories that are somehow connected to the telephone. So the um, sonic alert system that you saw, they only provide the basic system because the basic system will alert you if you don't have your hearing devices in or or you don't have hearing devices, that your phone is ringing. So it's connected to your phone. You have a phone line running into it. And when your phone rings, it flashes. And it also has a bed shaker that goes with it. And I'm thinking that many of you might not know what a bed shaker is. And here they're saying this one comes with a bed shaker, but I don't see that there but there is a bed shaker in our presentation. And I'm gonna go back to that slide so you can see it. And what the bed shaker is, is they're round discs like hockey pucks. And they can be wired or wireless. So see this picture of the Sonic Alert Home Aware signal and see that round disc? Well, you put them underneath your pillow and what happens is they have a really strong vibration. So if you're sleeping at night and you can't hear things, so you would be alerted by vibration. And the sonic alert, you could use the uh, bed shaker and it also alerts you because see where the numbers are? It flashes alert, alert, or telephone so that you know what's happening. So this particular company has created an all around system. So California Connect, old CTAP, they don't sell the accessories, but you can purchase the accessories from Diglo or Diglo or on Amazon, wherever you search to find the best price for them. So I happen to have this device and I have the accessory item for smoke and carbon monoxide that's plugged into that device. So in my bedroom at night, if my husband and I are sleeping, I mean, or if he weren't there, I would be alerted that there was a smoke, a fire or carbon monoxide danger. Does that answer your question? Pretty much, thank you. All right, so great to have discussion like this. Are there um, other questions, anything related to hearing loss about um, anybody you know or family member or an organization you're in that you would like to um, ask a question? Because we're here. Yeah, somebody else has questions. No, yes. I I noticed when you started this presentation, you had 
uh, a subcaption saying record. I was wondering if you were recording this session and how can we call it in on our computer at home to review everything that we're talking about? Thank you so much. Yes, I recorded um, this presentation and I will make it available to uh, you or to Elena to make available to you if um, to everyone who would like to, uh, to uh, view this again. That's a terrific idea. Um, so Elena and I will be in contact. Is that okay, Elena? Yeah, that's fine. And so, does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah, so she could, um, she would give us the link and then we can pass that on to you. Yeah, because I mean, this is a lot of information. Right, right. Yeah. And I know like the California Connect, we just did a training on that. They came in, I think it was November. Did you guys remember? Like when Contessa yeah. yeah, so she brought the phones. I wasn't here that month, but I had invited her to come and she's done presentations for us before. Actually, she's coming back in March to do some other trainings. So... Any other questions? Yes. Um, I have a comment before the next question about California Connect. Uh -huh. So some people don't realize that you're entitled to one telephone, but you're also entitled to one accessory of each type. So I'd really like to recommend for everybody who's here that they get what's called a neck loop. If you have a hearing instrument with a telecoil um, and what that allows you to do is to connect to a whole wide variety of devices that have audio ports. And then it goes directly to your hearing aid. The other thing I recommend everybody get is the um, sonic alert home aware signaling system. So all of these things are available to you. So the neck loop is in one category, the alerting system is in another category and just tell them I can't hear the phone ring. Um, so it's not just only the telephone and you can go on their website and see which particular things they offer to, to pick. So Amanda, can you call on that person who had the question before I added on to about California Connect? Yes, go ahead. I was just wondering the address um, or who would connect again, I forget, for the 148 different devices that you can try out. I, uh, can, Elena, can you repeat? the question near the microphone so it will caption i i didn't get it a hundred she, she wanted to know when you spoke about the different devices that they could try on a trial basis yes What's the okay What's the website for that i'm gonna um we can go back to that slide that is an um organization uh Anne's going to share that. And I need to see what it's called also. Because Anne it just and you told, can send that to me later on too. And then I can um yeah, but um I think I, I do want to have it spoken here. It's called ability tools and it's uh, the website is right there and they have different devices they will mail you for you to try. It's a lending library, they're not selling anything. And this is beautiful that they make this, uh, that they have this offer. So thank you for asking that question and helping us um, sh you know, show that again to your group. So um, are there other questions? Uh, we have just a quick close here to the next yeah. slide. We have another question. Yes, please. I just have a, a one question, and it's basically, um, is it possible that people that 
are either completely deaf, uh, could be diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's mistakenly because of the auditory isolation. Yes. So people who are completely deaf that can be, um, you're saying, okay, let me rephrase it. Hearing loss is sometimes misinterpreted. Doctors see that people aren't responding or that they want to be alone or they're not talking. They may think it's Alzheimer's or dementia, but it could be hearing loss. So I recommend that hearing loss get ruled out. Let's rule that out as a problem, then see if it's dementia or Alzheimer's or something else. But you don't know. If someone's not responding, you don't know that it's not hearing loss. So um, I helped um, someone with uh, communicate with their grandmother because she was in a, a facility and they, they were discounting her as having dementia or being culturally insensitive to her as a Latina woman. I said, here, take this little assistive listening device. It's a headphone and a control with a microphone. Put the, put the headphone on your grandma and now talk to her. She can turn up the volume. Guess what? Her grandma could hear. <laughs> and she's been using that device in that senior facility. The doctors are amazed. The health, uh, the people who take care of her are amazed. Well, this is hearing loss. You need to check to see if hearing loss is part of the situation. Sarah, I'd like to expand a little bit on this topic because I think that there um, was additional information in the question. I'm not sure, but I just want to mention it. And we do know at this time that there is a relationship between hearing loss and dementia. And if you have hearing loss, your chances of having, getting dementia are greatly increased. At this time, it's not completely clear about what that relationship is and why it's there. They don't know for sure if it's, oh, something we didn't mention is you really don't hear with your ears. We think you hear with your ears. The ears are only there, including the outer ear, the, inner, the middle ear and the inner ear to send the sound, move the sound to your brain where it's interpreted as language. So they don't know whether it has something to do with the sound. They don't know for sure whether it's the locations, the closeness of the locations. But what we do know is that there is an increased risk for that. Thank you. Um, okay, Our, we're happy to take um, more questions. Anybody have something that they would um, like to ask the questions? Um, yes. I don't think we have any more questions. Any comments? <laughs> okay, I don't think so. I think we're... Okay, so I have just two quick uh, slides to close with. And Anne, so um, we, HLAA, we are the largest consumer organization in the United States focused on the needs of people with hearing loss. We have chapters throughout the country. Local chapter is HLAA North Bay, and Anne is Diablo Valley chapter. We host North Bay, we host monthly meetings in the Zoom with captions, and we have presentations about coping skills and techniques and current technologies. And we have our virtual meetings are open to the public. 
So please join us, including our fourth Thursday Hope Support Group. This is where we share challenges and successes of living with hearing loss. We've been doing this for five years, and it's a, a wonderful um, interaction for all of us. Next. Please know that you are always welcome to join us at our meetings. And today, I hope you've learned how pervasive and common hearing loss is, and that if you have hearing loss, you're not alone, and that there's a wide variety of assistive listening devices available to help people with hearing loss. And most of all, I hope that you get your hearing tested and that you've learned the most important thing when interacting with a person with hearing loss, which is please face me. So thank you very 